Hi, this is uh, Jason with RPC Electronics, and this is the twelfth and final lesson in our Eagle CAD tutorial. Um, throughout this lesson, obviously, this has been a get you started, get you into the software, and get you used to it. Some of the common tools, and and that's pretty much what we've done. Lessons one through eleven, creating an entire board from start to finish. In this lesson, we're going to go over a few common questions that I've seen in the forums. Um, uh, comments, uh, people who have uh, emailed me personally, asked me questions. Um, so I've compiled a, a list of six questions that I think are fairly common. Um, I'm sure there are other questions that I'm not answering here today, but uh, at, at least I'm going to cover these six, which seem to be the most common. So the first one we're going to cover is nets. And if you're not familiar with the net, <coughs> excuse me, if you're not familiar with the net, a net is a way of making a connection between two points on the schematic without having to draw an actual physical line from two points. For example, let's say that I wanted to make a connection from right here at the power jack, and I wanted that connection to go straight to this capacitor C2. So we want to go from J1 to C2. Instead of drawing one big line, I can draw two nets to do that. But that doesn't make any sense, does it? We don't want to bypass all of this. But one thing we could do that would be a common use is having uh, some kind of access to the input power before it goes to the regulator. So we'll, we'll use that as an example to add a net. So if you look down here in the bottom left, we've got two buttons. One's called net and the other one's called label. And we're going to use both of those in conjunction. But before we do that, we're going to add one part to the schematic. So we're going to go to our parts, uh, our library list, and I'm going to use what's called a, a Wago connector. It's fairly common. These are uh, sometimes uh, called screw terminals. So we'll take uh, this two terminal here, and first thing I'm going to do is, is since it's pointing to the right, I want it to point to the left. So we're going to use our mirrored function up here, and it rotates the connector uh, horizontally. See, if I if I leave it like this and I right-click to turn it, now pin one is on the bottom and pin two is on the top. So if I want to keep those pins in the same order, I just use the mirror function to flip it around. Okay, and I'm going to add this connector right here. Now we know that we need one side to be ground. We'll just say pin two. So we're going to go to our copy tool and we're going to use that to copy one of our grounds that are already present. And we're going to add that to pin two. But now we want to connect pin one to the out to the voltage input after the switch. And by doing that, we're going to use our net. So we're going to click on this net tool here. And we're going to click anywhere on this on this wire here and we're going to add a net now if I click once it's going to continue to want me to draw so I got to click a second time to get it to stay and you'll notice that a uh, junction was automatically added for us here so we're going to come over here and we're going to do the exact same thing on pin one remember click twice to release it now we're going to go to our label and we're going to click on that line and you're going to notice that the line is going to highlight light green and you're also going to have this little what looks kind of like a fly wire meaning that this label is now associated with this net I'm going to right click so I can orient it with the with the net I'm going to click again to set it we're going to do the exact same thing with this one you can see that it's turned light green we're going to orient the net label click again and there we go Okay, so now that we've done that, let's flip to our board real quick. You'll see that our, uh, our Wigo connector, pin 2 is connected to ground, you can see by the fly wire. Pin 1 is not connected to anything yet, and you'll see why that is in a moment. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set our connector on the board. Let's go back to our schematic. Now you'll notice n dollar sign one and n dollar sign five. These are default names that Eagle gives to um, these when when you create them. 
or actually it gives those names to any trace that you create without be if you don't rename them they're gonna stay this but we're gonna rename them so we're gonna go and use our name tool and we're gonna click on n dollar sign one and we're gonna make sure it's highlighted and it's gonna come up with the name and then we're just gonna do VN we're gonna call it VN alright so we've now changed the name of this net the VN we're going to use our name tool to go over here to n dollar sign five, same thing, and we're going to call it VN as well. Now, when I hit OK, it's going to ask me, "Do you want me to connect n dollar sign five to VN?" Yes, we do. So now that I've done that, both of these nets are called VN. And if we flip back to our board, there now pin one has been tied to VN, as you can see here. And that's all there really is to nets. Now, of course, I need to come in here and I need to run my my traces for this new part but uh, and I'm not going to do that right now but you can see that by using a net instead of running a wire all the way around which wouldn't have been a big deal in this case but picture yourself working on a schematic that's got 30 40 50 components or more and it's very con congested and clustered and all of a sudden you need to get a connection from one IC on one side all the way to something on the other side you could run a trace, you could, you could, uh, or a wire, I should say. You could run one, and and it would be probably a mess, especially if you had to run a bunch of those. But by using nets, you can clean up your schematic, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, question two is how do I view a signal uh, on the, on the circuit board? Sometimes when we get a, a nice complex schematic. Um, well, when the schematic's simple, it's usually very easy to go to the board and be able to pick out where our traces are. But sometimes on a, on a very complicated schematic, we don't know. It's very hard to pick it out by eye. So there's a function called the show function, or, or some people call it view, but the Eagle actually calls it show. And by using show, we can use that to highlight any function on this schematic and then go see where it is on the board. Let's use our net that we just recently created. We're going to click on the on the net. And if you notice, anything connected to this net just turned light green as well as our VN over here. Now that we've done that, let's go to the board. If you look closely, you can tell that this trace has turned this blue trace here on S1 going to the regular has turned a light blue as well as the pads have changed a light green. That Those have been highlighted because we click to view those in the schematic. You also notice that this green pad of the Wago connector we had has turned light green as well. Even though we haven't run a trace yet, the trace has actually turned a little bit brighter yellow as well. So even though we haven't run a trace, that pad is still associated with that net. And now we can actually see um, what we've highlighted on the board by highlighting it in the schematic. Okay, question number three is how do I make a library show back up? I've seen a couple people saying that their libraries are disappearing. A um, couple different things can happen to cause that. I'm not going to go through the list of those, but I will show you how to make it come back. Let's bring up our uh, library view for a second. And I'm just going to go to the top, and we're going to notice that the first library here is called the 19 inch it's a slot your card library doesn't matter what the library is I'm just gonna use one at the top okay so I'm gonna hit cancel I'm gonna open up the um, project editor I'm gonna go to the library section it'll take it a second to load up all the libraries alright now that this is up you'll notice the 19 inch library is right here take a look here you'll notice there's a green dot this green dot means that this library is actively being used if I click on this green dot it will turn gray when I turn it gray like that I'm effectively turning off that library so the next time I go into the uh, parts editor or not parts editor the library chooser that part will no longer be available now all I have to do is click again to re-enable that part and then the part will show back up. The only place this doesn't work is if you have libraries you've added that are not in the library folder of the EagleCAD folder. Those libraries will not show up in this listing. 
and those you'll have to re-add by using the uh, library and the use option. You have to use that to actually select a library that may not be located in the Eagle library folder. All you have to do is open the, f open the library that way and the library will become available for use in the schematic editor. Okay, uh, question number four is uh, how do I add mounting holes or mounting pads to the board? That's another good question. And holes and mounting pads, mounting holes, mounting pads, they all depend on what type of what type of board you're making if you're using if you're designing a board around a specific housing of some sort it all depends but in this case our board's just kind of an arbitrary square shape it's not designed for any specific housing so we're just going to add a couple of mounting boards just a couple of simple mounting holes to the board and we do that by using the hole function and it's located here in the in the almost the bottom left it's right above the rat's nest so we're going to click on that and we're going to get this this uh, uh, emblem here with the crosshairs. Up in the top left is where we can choose our hole diameter, the drill diameter. In this case we're in mils, so I'm going to switch back to millimeter and we'll use 0.5. And now you can see our holes, uh, our preset drill, drill hole sizes are populated in this drop down that we don't have to use this size, any of these sizes, like here's a one millimeter for example, here's a 1.1, 1.2 and so on, goes then it starts to jump, 2, 2.2, 2.8 let's say we want just a good even three millimeter hole, well we can highlight this one, three and hit enter, now all of a sudden we have a three millimeter hole so let's uh, let's just zoom in here and we're just gonna punch two quick holes here. We're gonna put one here and we'll put one down here. Now again if you're designing your board specific to a housing of some sort you'll want to use the diagrams that come with the with the housings um, uh, data sheet in order to uh, make sure you're putting the holes in the proper places uh, if you're not using any kind of housing like that and you just want some random mounting holes or some general mounting holes do as you wish I typically will try to make the holes the same spacing in the corners uh, for example if I am putting in a two millimeter, till two millimeter hole I may choose to put them ten to put the mounting hole ten millimeters from each side of the corner so it'd be ten millimeters in and 10 millimeters down from this top left corner and so on. Okay, back to the schematic editor. Um, the next question, question number five, is how do I add a frame? And a frame is basically a uh, object that makes the schematic look really nice. And what I mean by that is when you have a completed schematic, um, you may want to have a nice little border around the schematic as a, fu a finishing touch. You can also put information down in the bottom right corner of the frame to show who drew it, the name of the schematic, when it was drawn, and so on. So to do that, all we need to do is go down to our frames uh, in the in the uh, parts, uh, in the, uh, the um, components uh, selector, and we'll find we have this whole host of frames here. So if I click on one and start arrowing down, you can see there's many different types of frames to choose from. I'm going to choose this one right here, this A5L-LOC. It's about the right size for our, for our schematic here. And all I do is click once, and there it is. We've now effectively added a frame. Now, some people might want to move this whole thing so it aligns with the hash mark in the, in the left corner here bottom left corner so we're going to do a move all and we'll align it with that with this hash mark right here but we've now added a frame and then you'll see where it says not save all you have to do is hit your save button zoom in and out and now it'll show the date and time sometimes I like to use our text tool and I'll say something like drawn by J. Roush 
and I will use I'll change the layer for this text to info and I'll use that to add that text to the box to show additional information for the schematic now keep in mind if you move this frame any text you add here is not going to be moved with it so you have to move it as a group okay the uh, sixth and final question that we had was how to add a border to our board when we are uh, when we're getting ready to send our board off to a board house some board houses not all some require some kind of visual border uh, that they can see and, and use as a as a, a key for how to cut your board what size not all board houses require this but many do um, and it's very simple if you remember when we did our original silk screening uh, the silk screen was all created automatically for us except for the LED widget version 1.0 we added well we're gonna add some silk screen in addition to that by clicking our line tool and we're gonna go down and we're gonna change the layer to T silk top silk and to make this easy we'll put this on one millimeter grid and then all we have to do is start in any corner of the board click once click once again we'll go down here and we'll click here and then we'll, we'll double click here to finish it up now we've effectively added an actual border a silkscreen border to our board and we'll save that now that border will show up in the silk screen to the board house but most board houses will not print that silk screen because that indicates the actual border of the board um, and if your board house requests this uh, just verify that with them because you probably don't want a silk screen border all the way around the edge of the board well that pretty much wraps up our uh, our question and answer for lesson 12 um, hope those were some questions that most of you out there had that you wanted answered and um, that should get you uh, going even a little bit further as usual um, play with Eagle just keep playing at it there's so many things you can do with it and um, thanks for watching uh, lesson 12 I, I appreciate uh, all the support that we've had thanks